In the last lesson, we learned how to obtain permission to access a user's web camera and microphone, list available devices, and create a media stream from those devices. In this lesson, we'll learn how StreamCat provides a low latency live stream broadcast in a web browser with the Amazon IVS Web Broadcast SDK. To start a low latency live stream, we'll need the Amazon IVS channels ingest endpoint and stream key. If you recall from lesson 1.5, these values are stored in the channel object for each user. The first thing we'll need to do to get ready to broadcast is to retrieve these values for the user's channel. The getChannel function is used to fetch the user's channel configuration via the backend API. In the slash dashboard slash API slash channel endpoints handler, we retrieve the channel from the current logged in user. This ensures that we'll have the ingest endpoint and stream key available to configure the broadcast client. To broadcast a low latency live stream from a browser, StreamCat uses the Amazon IVS Web Broadcast SDK. The full documentation for this SDK is available on GitHub, and we'll walk through how StreamCat uses the SDK to create a low latency streaming experience. You can install the SDK directly with NPM, see the Getting Started section of the documentation, or by including the SDK via a script tag, which is how StreamCat includes the SDK. Now that the SDK and channel information are available, we can create an instance of the Amazon IBS Broadcast Client. Before we create an instance of the client, we need to understand the difference between various Amazon IBS channel types. By default, StreamCat sets each channel to a basic channel type. To give users an incentive to grow their channel and broadcast on a consistent basis, StreamCat will upgrade a channel to a partner status and set the channel type to Advanced HD with a preset of higher bandwidth delivery when the channel achieves more than five followers. To create an instance of the broadcast client, we need to determine the appropriate stream configuration. If a channel is a partner channel, we'll use standard landscape, else we'll use basic full HD landscape. This configuration is passed to the create method along with the channel's ingest endpoint. The client allows us to listen for various events, including a connection state change event that lets us update a Boolean is broadcasting variable that is used to update the broadcast status on the client side. Your application may have different requirements related to the stream configuration. Refer to the documentation for the broadcast client to learn about all of the available preset configurations. We can present a local preview of the broadcast by adding a canvas to the front end and using the attach preview method on the broadcast client instance. In the previous lesson, we saw that StreamCat listens for changes on the selected audio and video device ID variable and creates the appropriate media stream. We can modify the method that watches those changes to add the media stream to the broadcast client via add video input device or add audio input device. Notice that we first must remove any existing streams before adding the new stream. The call to add video input device accepts a media stream as the first argument, a unique name for the stream as a second argument, and a video composition as the third argument. This video composition object contains an index, similar to a Z index in CSS, height, width, X, and Y. In our case, we pass this.currentVideoComposition, which defaults to the default video composition object. We'll see more about how video composition can be used to layer and position cameras and other media streams in subsequent lessons. Now that we have a broadcast client, a preview on the front end, and have added audio and video streams to the client, we're ready to start and stop the low latency live stream. For this, we call the start broadcast and stop broadcast methods, depending on whether or not the stream is currently broadcasting. Note that start broadcast requires the channel stream key to determine which channel the broadcast belongs to. In this lesson, we looked at how to use the Amazon IVS web broadcast SDK to broadcast a low latency live stream to an Amazon IVS channel. In the next lesson, we'll see how to add screen sharing to a broadcast.